Fiancé's family vandalized my car and called me names, because she never told them about our engagement, I'm left with an ultimatum. I, 25F, am getting married to my fiancé, 29 meters, in May. When we first got together he told me that he was married from 20 to 22 years old to his high school sweetheart, we met when he was 25, but she passed of sepsis from a botched surgery. He didn't cope well and stayed in contact with her family, namely father and two sisters, 19 and 24. It was a soft spot for me for a while at the beginning because there was so much history they had that we would not have and it was tough knowing that she was all around him. I never told him and decided to work through it on my own, especially with the fact that he would often spend time with her family during our relationship. Her birthday, their anniversary and anniversary of her death, he'd spend the day with her family. It was uncomfortable at first knowing the man I loved was reminiscing about love he had with someone else but I kept trying to see it from his perspective and the last couple years I am completely secure in our relationship and it doesn't bother me much anymore. Well, he proposed this time last year and I was over the moon. I love this man with all my heart but I recently learned that he never told them that we got engaged. I've been trying local coffee shops the past few months rather than my usual run and tried a new one. His LWs, editor's note, late wife, sister worked there and other than being awkward, she did a double take of my engagement ring and looked really unhappy. I didn't mention it and left. My fiancé told me that she kept messaging him on social media about it and I wasn't happy that he kept it a secret. He apologized and was very depleted by it all. He said that he didn't want to hide me but he didn't want to hurt them either and that both of us were a huge part of his life. I understand that and let him off the hook slightly, just told him to be upfront with them, from now on. That was that. At least I thought so. A week ago, on Sunday, I got a message from the 24 years old asking if I was happy with myself, that I would never replace his LW and that if she was still alive he'd chose her over me every time. She even said that he only kept me around for me money and something to stick his D backslash CK in. I ignored it but I can't say that it didn't affect me. When you're in my position, all these points are ones you have to work through and it's not easy to get over those insecurities. It feels like a knock in the teeth when they're used against you. I mentioned it to him and he comforted me and reassured me. He said he'd set boundaries with her and I'd never have to hear from her again. Fine by me. That was until I found my car with WH backslash re and grave robber smeared in red paint. I had saved for this car for a year and it was expensive, very expensive. The tires were slashed and the windows cracked. I asked the store a few doors down for their CCTV camera footage of that night but it was blurry and didn't catch much. It did manage to catch half a license plate though in the color and make of a car. It was his LW's youngest sister's car. I told him I was filing a police report and he asked me to hold off until he talked to them first. I told him no but I would if they paid for the damages and apologized to my face. He set up the meeting for last night and it didn't go well to say the least. Everyone was shouting. The sisters told me they, yes both of them, had nothing to be sorry for and that I should leave their family alone, including my fiancé and their family. He told them that it wasn't fair to him to be lonely forever and that he'd hoped they'd be supportive of him finding love again. They told him he was betraying LW and that he never loved her if he'd marry someone else. They didn't have a problem with him having a new GF because he'd realized she was the only one for him and get tired of me. Now that hadn't happened, they we, re-putting their foot down. The youngest told him to tell me that they were right and that he'd never love anyone like LW. My fiancé broke down at the table. I picked him up and made us leave. I told them I'd be filing a report and suing for damages, and the next time they saw us would be in court. When we got back and calmed down I gave him an ultimatum. Either he cuts contact or we call of the wedding and go out separate ways. I wasn't going to live my life with this harassment and someday subject my children to their bullying. He said they would never bully a child but I shot him down and said he didn't expect any of this either. He called their father, who was fairly chill about it all but still defending his daughters. They say I shouldn't control him and that I'm horrible for cutting them off. Update 1 I have a discussion with my fiancé either later today or tomorrow about my ultimatum. I didn't sleep at all yesterday or the night before, for obvious reasons. There's a ding on my phone at least once an hour from them saying one thing or another, mainly the 19 yo and I don't know what they've told people but I've got a message from one of their uncles and grandparents calling me horrible stuff too. So obviously they've been spreading what's happened this week and twisting it. I haven't blocked them because I want to gain as much evidence as I can for the inevitable case. Regardless of any outcome with my fiancé, I will be suing and filing a criminal case for harassment and vandalism and looking for a restraining order. I just haven't had the mental fortitude to do so yet. I'm hoping my fiancé will help me. I haven't spoken to my fiancé since the argument at the table, other than to tell him they go or I do. It was my choice to give him a couple days space to come to terms with everything and I will contact him when I'm ready. All of this, from the first message till now has been a week. It's a huge weight to contemplate leaving people you've known for 15 years. S and who you grew up with. He did set hard boundaries with the sister from the coffee shop as I've seen the messages. He said, paraphrasing, you have no right talking to op at all if this is how you're going to behave. She doesn't deserve this and you've gone too far. Why are you being like this? And she responded with more name calling and back and forth. He ended by saying not to message me again and to make sure everyone else does the same. I was happy with that. At this point only one person in that family had an issue, to my knowledge, so it was silly to have him cut all of them off. It may not be enough for some but it was enough for me to feel safe and comfortable. For those saying he needs therapy and counseling, he's already getting it. He's been getting it since before we even started dating after an incident at work. I don't know about any of their family though. 
The first time I had a conversation with any of them was that night. Some people are wondering what LW died of, and it was a botched weight loss surgery where she died of sepsis. People were wondering if he was somehow the reason behind the surgery, hence the family's insane reaction, but he was not in the slightest. He likes bigger women and wouldn't pressure something like that onto her, speaking from experience. I also want to clear up the not calling the police about the car thing. It was entirely my idea to not file charges in exchange for a face-to-face -face apology and damage payment. He only wanted me to wait so that he could talk to her to see if she regretted it and then have her father pay the damages. At the time, we thought it was just the 19 yo that smashed up my car, not both daughters. Neither of us wanted to ruin her life. When I found out it was both of them, it was full steam ahead. Update 2 Well what a wild morning I've had. My fiancé came over bright and early this morning and I've never been so damn tired. You may want to take a seat because this will be long. Sorry an adverb. Ants. First of all, I want to set the record straight here. A lot of people are coming for my fiancé over not cutting them off from the get-go which I don't think is fair. He's a very mild-mannered, calm and calculating person and that's who I always knew he was. Nothing has changed. If he had been Rocky Balboa and flipped the cafe table shouting obscenities, he would not have been the man I fell in love with. He did exactly what I expected him to do and exactly what I was comfortable with. You may be attracted to other things in men and expect other things and that's awesome, but not me. I text him saying I thought it was time to discuss this and he was back at home not a half hour later. He'd been staying with a friend the couple nights we had no contact. We sat on our bed to talk because my back is sore from all the packing and I wasn't gonna force myself to sit at the table. Before we even got to talking he asked if we could cuddle for a minute. It definitely took some of the weight off and we were able to talk like a couple and not awkward strangers because, regardless of some people's beliefs, we do love each other and it took me a very long time to feel confident in that fact. Before anyone calls me a doormat again, no, I was still sure I would stick to my ultimatum. The first thing I asked was if he felt he had enough time to make his decision and he said he didn't need time. He was very shocked and bewildered at how so much could change in just a week and how everything he knew was shook up that he couldn't think and went numb. He did apologize that he didn't take a more defensive stance at the cafe and he doesn't want to make excuses for it. An explanation was that he genuinely didn't expect such a vitriolic response. He hid the engagement because he knew they weren't over LW's death and would be upset at the news. It wasn't like I would feel upset by them not knowing, which I wasn't really. He's known these girls since before they were in double digits and, he would never have thought them capable of it. It came so far out of left field that he froze. I asked him if there was any possibility that either of them had a thing for him and he looked very confused and disturbed. I said how I've had people tell me it's not uncommon for siblings to do this after loss and he thought on it. Turns out you were right. He said the 24 yo, about 8 months after LW's death made a move and tried to kiss him. He immediately left and told her mother about it, mother and father are divorced now but weren't then, she was a minor at the time and messaged him saying she would be 18 soon so it wasn't a big deal. Her mother made her see the school counselor and didn't allow her to be alone with him for a while. It was years ago so he'd forgotten it even happened. He said he was sure that wasn't the case now because it had been so long but I'm not so convinced. Not that it matters anymore. He opened up his Facebook and gave it to me to read. 24 yo had been messaging him which he ignored. She ranged from telling him off to crying and saying how betrayed the family was to trying to manipulate him against me. He said he was sure that he needed to put them behind him, and had been thinking it on and off since he proposed, but couldn't bring himself to do it. After this week, the fire was lit and he knew what he had to do. It was all just abstract until suddenly it was very real. He asked me how I've been coping and I told him. I felt like I'd done everything right but somehow things turned out worse than if I'd been the jealous type and stopped their contact at the beginning. I tried to be understanding and put in so much effort to be secure in myself and our relationship only for everything I worked on to be thrown in my face like I was a mistress that was cheating with him. He didn't blink the entire time and just listened. He said he should have been more observant and realized I was struggling with this so that he could help me but I've always been the strong one so he neglected to and he'll do better. As I've said in a few comments now, his parents had him in their late 40s and are retired. He hates to involve them in negativity but I was stunned when he said he's been talking to them about this since the first Facebook message. They were very understanding but his father took a tough love approach. He said the best quote I think I've ever heard. Get your act together before the jig is up. They offered to come stay for a while and help us move. I don't think that's necessary but I really appreciated the thought. On the subject of moving. I made it clear that I would not be living in this house any longer than I had to and he completely agreed. His parents offered to find us a place in their state if we wanted to have more of a support network and I'm honestly considering it after all this. They're only a state away from my own family so we'd be a lot better off. His job is remote and I should be able to find work there easily enough. I've been in contact with a friend who's a mechanic and they've quoted me between 1-2k for the damages, but that's in a cost estimate as a discount. A few people have said to get a real statement and to shop around. The real cost is between 4-5k and that's just for the noticeable damage. My friend thinks they've done something to the engine so thank god I couldn't drive it anywhere. He thinks I may be entitled to a replacement car altogether. If so, I will be sure to sue for it and that's not gonna be cheap. After all the emotional things were discussed he mentioned when would I be comfortable enough to go to the police. I made clear he was okay with that or go on my own. He said, the surest I've ever seen him, that this is what needed to be done and he wasn't going to let them continue. He'd done enough to try and shield them but he wasn't going to let it come at my expense. I'm currently in the bath frothing in bath bombs but will be going to the station as so, on as I'm done. 
He's downstairs right now printing out the new quotes from the mechanics and the messages 24 Yo sent him over the past couple days so we can go prepared. People have said that nothing will come of it, and you may be right. But I have to try. Hoping my local police don't have anything better to do. It's a small town. To finish, I made a point of asking again if he would cut them off or I had to go. He didn't miss a beat and said that they're no longer going to be a part of his life, even if I decided to leave. He did ask for one last meeting to say goodbye to her parents and to put a close on that part of his life, and to explain to the girls that this is not my fault but his decision after seeing how cruel they were capable of being. After that, we would block them on everything and move forward. I was completely fine with that. So, there we have it. Writing all this out and being able to talk to people about everything has been both helpful and a good distraction from the dumpster fire that was my life and everything worked out as well as I could have hoped. We'll see how his meeting goes with them. Update 3 So we drove down to the police station with our block of paperwork and had a couple hours talk. They were so sweet about everything. As some of you expected, they did say I should have come earlier but they didn't really care because it was only a few days. They said that it often takes people about this amount of time to actually file charges if they weren't an immediate threat or danger, so unless someone was about to throw punches, I handed them everything and it looks like I've got plenty of evidence. They'll be contacting my insurance on my behalf to get the ball rolling and so they can come to do a check of my car themselves. And then they can open a claim with me if I want. They're not filing a claim, they're just notifying about the criminal damages, I've filed criminal charges for harassment and vandalism and they'll notify me with more details about my restraining order this week. My fiancé told the police that he was planning on meeting with LW's family and asked if that would contradict my case and they said no. We're not married at the time of filing so legally we're two separate entities in the case. Or something. So, my car is totaled. My mechanic friend, I'm gonna call him Tom because I can't keep saying my mechanic friend. So Tom and his partner at the shop did a full check on my car and this is the damage they found. Shattered windshield 4 slash tires 2 broken windows paint, obvious, I think, unknown substance in the engine oil battered bodywork they said with this amount of damage, I should just go for a new car so that's what I'll be doing. If anyone is curious, it was a Volvo. I'd always wanted one and managed to buy one new two years ago. Either they get me a new car if they'd be set back about 60k. Either way I'll be alright. The amount classifies the vandalism as a felony so they could be looking at jail time too. My fiancé met with the family on Saturday and Tom sat by the window. I currently live in a one-party state so as long as my fiancé consents, the recording can be used in my case. While it may not be as drama-filled as some of you may want, it was still pretty stressful to see. They met at the same cafe that we did before and Tom sat a few tables away. Fiancé arrived after their father and before them. For the best because they managed to have a calm conversation for once. Fiancé told him how he was feeling and Phil was very understanding but still trying to minimize. He was saying things like you know they miss LW and they'll come around and just need time to come to terms with you moving on. He kept trying to initiate paying for the damages but fiancé wouldn't talk about it until the sisters arrived. It was like butter wouldn't melt with the 24 yo but 19 came in like the Tasmanian devil. My fiancé didn't acknowledge anyone until it had all settled down where, then he said this would be his last meeting with all of them and they'd be going their separate ways. He turned to the girls and said that he would miss who he thought they were but the way they could treat people horrified him, especially me. He said that this was all him and they needed to accept that I was not to blame. He even said that it was me who offered the apology in exchange for not filing charges. The 19 yo then interrupted asking what charges and that no one was going to charge them for barely touching a car. She was a deer in headlights when he asked what they'd done to the engine oil and the two looked at each other. Seems they didn't expect me to find that out. Cue up the groveling. 24 yo actually tried to touch his hand and told him he had to stop me pressing charges because this would ruin her and interfere with 19 yo's college. He said it was too late and the cops should be issuing a warrant soon, it can take a few days. I thought it was an instant thing but apparently not, this is when their dad got involved again and said for everyone to calm down and fix this like adults. Now he wants his girls to be adults. I see. He asked if fiancé would convince me to drop the charges in exchange for that apology and he'd pay the damages. When my fiancé said it was 60k, the eyes he gave to those women would shave the hair off a cat. The video wasn't the best but I swear I could see the color drain from their faces. I may sound awful but I enjoyed it. Call me what you will. They kept going on about apologizing and that they'd pay but he just said it was too late and he was done. He tried to be civil but they were the ones that wouldn't let it go. 24 yo actually asked him to set up a meeting with me so they could get to know me and put it all behind us. He didn't reply and after the silence they piped up again like so she won't even meet us? So she's behind all this because she doesn't want us around. We'll see about that. Not using exact quotes back, Oz I don't know if I'm allowed so not risking it, things like that. They went on and on and frankly it was funny more than hurtful. But they did incriminate themselves more and more for my harassment case and the nail in the coffin was when 19 yo said if we can do that to a car, imagine what else we could do. That, my friends, is both a confession and a threat of bodily harm. My fiancé said one loud stop before wishing Phil well and telling the girls to not come near me. He then got up and left. That's where the recording ends because we wouldn't be able to use anything afterwards anyway. As for moving, we're pretty much all packed up and have a truck coming on Friday. We'll be staying with his parents until we find a place.